ready, Miss Lloyd? I'm locking up now. You have to look up and say it's Thursday. Demonstration night. You usually stay open until 8 o'clock. Oh, no, not tonight. I'm having no more late night demonstrations. Do you know that in five weeks I haven't sold a thing? Surely you've had one customer. Hardly a customer, Miss Lloyd. Just Mr. Worth. He comes in every week. He thinks this is a picture house or something. Well, tonight he's had it. Well, you'd better look sharp, Mr. Barnes. He's usually here by now. Oh, yes. Come on, Miss Lloyd. I'll lock the front door behind you, then I'll slip. Good night. Mr. Barnes. Mr. Barnes. <laughs> Don't go try that door. It's not that bad. <laughs> Mr. Worth, yes. And I was beginning to think that tonight you weren't going to make it. Ah, I see. And you were worried about me, were you, dear old friend? Well, there's no need to worry. I'm here now. Now, what shall we start with tonight? Cliff Mitchellmore or Yogi Bear? Neither, Mr. Worth. <laughs> you won't be watching any more television in this shop. Well, I'm amazed to hear you say that. After the promise you made the first night I came here. Promise? What yes, promise. Well, we sat here together watching Murder at Midnight, and you said that I could watch it through to the end. But I didn't know it was going on for 13 weeks. <laughs> well, for the past five weeks, you have been coming here to watch this serial. And frankly, I'm tired of it. Are you really? I, I got the impression that you were enjoying it. Ah, I know what it is. You're annoyed because you don't know who the murderer is, aren't you? <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. It's the butler. I have a surprise for you. The butler was shot last week. It's a red herring. I'll let you into a secret. Last week, when you went to lock the door, I switched over to the other channel, and there he was, the same man, <laughs> selling soap powder. <laughs> Mr. Worth, yes? Wouldn't it be a lot more convenient for you to watch the serial in your own home? Well, it would, dear old friend, but I don't want you coming round to my home bringing the set with you. No, it's wrong. I wasn't thinking of coming round to your home and bringing the set with me. I was thinking of you buying a set. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. It would solve all my problems, wouldn't it? <laughs> Where do you think I could get one? <laughs> I know. Why don't I buy one from you? After all, I'd rather do business with an old friend. <laughs> Thank you. Not at all. Just think. In future, you will be sitting in the comfort of your own home, watching television every night. <laughs> Except Thursday. Except Thursday? Well, don't say you've forgotten. I come round here to view with you every Thursday. <laughs> you don't think I deserve you just because I've got a set of my own days? <laughs> we were so noted for our loyalty. <laughs> We'd set you together. It's worth, we have a 17-inch portable at 65 pounds, a 17-inch table model with VHF at 70 pounds, and a 21-inch console with doors at 105 pounds. Well, I'm not worried about the doors. <laughs> have you anything at 50 shillings? <laughs> You can rent a set. Ten shillings a week, reducing to four and six after three years. Oh, well, that settles it. I'll wait three years and have one of four and six a week. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Yes? For you, I will let you have the demonstration model cheaply. Cheaply? <laughs> Our cheap is cheaply. Oh, would it make you happy if we say ten pounds? It'd make me a lot happier if you said fifty shillings. <laughs> <laughs> this set is worth at least thirty pounds. I will let you have it for ten pounds, plus free valves, free tubes, free maintenance. That cabinet alone is worth fifty shillings. Good, I'll take the cabinet now. You can send the free valves and tubes around next week. <laughs> do you want this set, or do you not? Yes, I want it. Go very well with my coffee table. Very well. Very I will well. send my man round to install it at your home. Sometime next week, shall we say Tuesday? Yes, still. I might be out, you know. So you'll want to know about the key, won't you? Well, yes. Yes, well, there's a... You'll find a note under the map saying that the key is at number 50. Number 50? Yeah. Tell, right. him, tell him to take no notice. No, no. No, the, the note is only there to fool the bird. <laughs> the key will be in my pocket. <laughs> then how will he get in? Now oh, the back door's always open. <laughs> Well, come along, my friend. It's time for the next episode. Sit down. <laughs> and there you are. There's the milk and the sugar and the tea. Don't forget to warm the pot, will you? <laughs> Oh, 
Hello? Is that you, Fred? Oh, hello, Governor. I'll be through in about ten minutes. I'm coming straight back. Right, now I've got some more calls for you to make. Oh. How did you get on with Mr. Worth? Oh, I haven't set eyes on him yet. He was out. I let myself in through the back door as we arranged. Hurry, Fred. Hurry. Oh, right, there, Governor. Ah, <laughs> I see you got my note then. Note? Yeah. What note? Well, the note saying that you should leave me an extra pint. Extra pint? Oh, I beg your pardon. You're obviously new. I should explain. I have a pint a day, three fresh eggs on Wednesdays, a bottle of yogurt on Sundays, and if there should be three consecutive sunny days during the summer, a bottle of orange squash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Worth, you're mixing me up. I've come to fix you up with a television set. Oh, what a pity. I've already bought one. Y yes, it's very similar to that one, too. Hard luck. But this is a set that you've bought. Oh, no, 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 it can't be. I bought mine from Mr. Barnes. Exactly. This is it. But it I have no right to sell it to you. We haven't really. It's mine. Well, I know it's yours. Mr. Barnes sent me round to install it. <laughs> it is a funny sort of a job for a milkman. <laughs> Mr. Worth, could we please forget about the milkman? Well, I very often do, but I did remember to leave a note this morning. I think it pays to have a tidy mind. Well, I suggest that you get yours swept up. <laughs> then we decide where to put the television. <laughs> I've got a few more calls to make. Yes, of course. No doubt you're worried about your horse. Oh, by the way, would you have a word with him? He, he keeps nibbling at my privet. <laughs> if that horse is anything like me, it's nearly at the end of its tether. <laughs> no, 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 right. uh, it's practically at the end of my privet. Look, <laughs> let's just decide where to put the television set, yes, eh? Yes. How about in this corner? Oh, yes, it would look very nice there. But what about the sound? That's the important thing, isn't it? Would you sit there? Please, just for a moment. Now, we'll pretend that I am the television set. Now, we'll assume that I'm switched on and already warmed up. Now, for the sound. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> this is your life. What do you think? I think you've got a slight touch of vertical hold. Do you want it in that corner or not? Well, don't let's be hasty. I suggest I sit there, you stand in the corner, and you, would you be kind enough to sing Sweet as the Moment When the Pod Went Pop? <laughs> Mr. Worth, if you don't mind, yes, you just sign this delivery note. I'll go back to the shop and pretend I've never even been here. Oh, there, there you are. <laughs> mm. You've forgotten something. You've forgotten something? My pen. I beg your pardon. You've got my pen! Oh, have I? Oh, I oh which one is yours? <laughs> this one. Oh. Well, I'd better show you how it works. Oh, I know how it works. The pressure of the paper causes the little ball to rise, <laughs> thus allowing the ink to flow through. Oh. I'll just switch on the picture and we'll check the vision. Now, Mr. Worth, this knob is for the volume, yes. this knob selects the channels, mm. and this knob here... Yes. Uh, if your picture's too dark, do you know what adds brightness? Yes, all my shirts are washed in it. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Mr. Worth, there's the book of instructions. Oh, now, we'll just check the picture. Yes. Ah, here it is. Ah, <laughs> it's one of those quiz games. <laughs> it's the best card. Yes, God. <laughs> I wonder what the lunchtime score is. <laughs> no, never mind. Yes. There you are, a perfect picture. Mr. Worth, I hope you have many hours of happy view. Ah, well, thank you very much indeed. Very kind of you. Camp 44 here. Any messages? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Camp 44 to base. Any messages? It's the television set. All right, base. Message understood. Roger and out. Well, that's funny. It doesn't sound like John Orloff to me. <laughs> it's coming from a taxi cab. Ah, what could a taxi be doing on his cricket pitch? <laughs> Roger, I'll pick him up at the Continental Cinema. Over and out. What are all those wavy lines? <laughs> well, it's some sort of interference. Oh, interference. It might be the aerial. Yes. I'll tell you what, I'll nip up onto the roof and have a look. Ah, oh, good, I'll come with you. No! <laughs> well, I'll be able to hold the ladder for you. Come on. No, no, no. <laughs> so you're getting all mixed up, you see. I am Harry Worth at... All right, I'll hang on. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. You must admit that the rose bush did break your fall. 
And I have apologized for moving the letter. Yes, that is the word. Yes, 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 go on. No, 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 no. Let me make this clear. I am Harry Work. You are Radio Taxes Limited. Now, would you please remember that, because it affects the rest of our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this man is sending me up the wall. Look, I'll start again from the beginning. I am speaking from 52 Acacia Avenue, where a taxi keeps coming through on my television. Now, the taxi that I can hear here, if it is there, would you send it here so we can both hear what I'm hearing here? <laughs> well, at least he agrees with me. What did he say? Hear, hear. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Worth. I've checked this set right through, and as far as I can see, it's absolutely perfect. All that time up on the roof is a complete waste of time. Not entirely. I did say you could keep the tennis ball you found in the gutter. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The best thing you can do is to go to the GPO and see one of their engineers. They're the people to deal with this sort of interference. Yes, yeah, splendid idea. They'll find that taxi for me. I'll go there immediately. Oh, Mr. Worth, uh, do you mind if I use your telephone? I'd like to phone my boss and tell him why I'm still here. You carry on. Oh, by the way, <laughs> don't forget that extra pint. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Barnes. It's Fred. I'd like to take my holidays early this year. Did you call a cab? Just a minute, Mr. Barnes. I didn't call a cab. Well, this is 52 Acacia Avenue, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. All right, you called the cab to take away a television set. Yeah, if that's it, you can get it into the cab yourself. Look, chum, I'm not interested in that television set. You or your cab. You will be when you see what's on the clock. Mr. Barnes, I'd like to cancel my holiday. I want to give my notice in. What about my clock? I don't care about your clock. You can take your clock and show it to that notice. <laughs> that <it> work. <laughs> Can you light, Barbie, won't you, Mr. Worth? Shall I get one of the engineers to fix it? No, that's all right, Mr. I'll do it myself. Oh, very good, sir. Oh, and would you give this to the duty engineer, please? Thank you. Oh. Come in. Uh, Mr. West? Yes? Could I have a word with you? Yes, of course. Thank you very much. Now, you don't know me. <laughs> Shall we sit down, Mr. Worth? Yes, I haven't got a head for heights. Would you be kind enough to thank you very much? Now, I have a problem and it's worrying me. I'm sure it is. Yes, it's rather technical. Well, we can solve any problems we have, may have, Mr. Worth. And the more technical they are, the more we enjoy it. Yes. Now, what can I do for you? I'm looking for a taxi. <laughs> oh, looking for a taxi? Yes. Is that the only thing you've come in here for? Uh, well... I wasn't going to say anything, but now that you've mentioned it, what about the postal orders? The postal orders? Yes, at Woodbridge Post Office. They used to be next to the savings bank. I queued up for half an hour, got to the counter. What did I find? Old age pensions. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I am not concerned with old age pensions. Isn't that a rather selfish attitude to a <laughs> I mean that I am only responsible for the post office engineering in this area. Post office engineering? Oh, <laughs> you mean the holes in the road? <laughs> that's rather a quaint way of putting it, but yes, that yeah. is part of our work. Silly of me not to recognize you. Isn't it surprising the difference a collar and tie makes? <laughs> There is no need for false modesty. I know who you are now. You used to be on the cement mixer, didn't you? <laughs> Why have you come here? Well, don't tell me you've forgotten. Uh, I'm looking for a taxi. You want a taxi? Yes. Hello, Miss Taylor. Would you order a taxi, please? What? Oh, yes. Where are you going to? Yes, I'm not going anywhere. But you said you wanted a taxi. Yes. But you're not going anywhere? No. Do you or do you not want a taxi? Yes. Miss Taylor, would you order that taxi, please? Right. Yeah, I hope it's the same taxi I'm getting on my television. On your television? Yes, it's been on Panorama, Sooty, Jukebox, Fury. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it didn't turn up in the Perry Como show next. <laughs> Why not? Or even the Flowerpot Man. <laughs> Flowerpot Man. You watch that show, do you? Now, <laughs> uh, let me get this straight. Ooh. You want a taxi. You're not going anywhere? No. It's been several times on television, but you have never seen it. No. And when the taxi is not there, the picture is perfect. Ah, oh, I see. This
this is something to do with interference on your television set. Yes. I'm getting it now. Are you? I hope it isn't. <laughs> What happens when you switch your set on? Well, one of three things. The phone rings, the man comes round from next door, or the kitchen boiler needs stoking up. <laughs> well, I think we've got range to send one of our chaps round to have a look at your set. What's the address, please? Uh, 52 Acacia Avenue. 52 Acacia... Uh, Acacia Avenue? Yes. Isn't that near the gas works? Ye yes, it is. Mm. Just a moment. Mm. 52. That's odd. No, it's even. <laughs> what I mean? Uh, even numbers down one side, odd numbers down the other. It's always been that way. Would you sit down, Mr. Worth, and I'll try to explain. We've had this trouble before. <clears throat> now, the gasometer is between your house and the BBC transmitter at Ridgeway. Any signal sent from the transmitter to your house strikes the gasometer and loses its strength. So you receive a weak signal. Now, the radio taxi is sending out strong signals, which you receive when he's in your area. Are you following me? <laughs> Let me try and put it more simply. Now, this is your house, right? This is the BBC transmitter, right? And this is the gasometer, right? Your house, BBC transmitter, gasometer. Now look very carefully. Does anything strike you about the gasometer? <laughs> Made in Japan? <laughs> Let's try again. Now the radio taxi is sending out a very strong signal. But because of that, the signal from the transmitter to your house is interrupted by the gasometer. But I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, might I make a suggestion? By my house, the gasometer, transmitter. <laughs> Why don't you ring the gas board and make the necessary arrangements? I give up. No, don't give up. Have courage. Ring them. They can only say no. There is nothing I can do for you. Nothing you can do for me and be a license holder. There's my license. Look at it. This is a dog license. It's a dog license. It's cheaper, isn't it? <laughs> but if I ever get a dog, I promise you I will get a television license. <laughs> Why don't you try and find the taxi driver and just ask him to reduce the strength of his signal? <laughs> That's the solution. You have definitely got brains. No wonder they took you off the holes in the road. <laughs> oh, by the way, regarding this gas on it, now, would it do any good if I switched the gas on before I switched on the television? Oh, I... <laughs> yes, Mr. Taylor. Taxi? What taxi? I didn't order it. Oh, yes, it was Mr. Worth. He's gone now. Would you cancel it? Yeah. What's the idea of calling a cab and then not using it? It was for Mr. Worth, but he's gone now. Worth? Mm. Does he live in Acacia Avenue? Yes, do you know him? No, I don't. But when I meet him, I'm going to fetch him such a slosh. When you do, <laughs> would you give him one for me? <laughs> Hello, radio taxis. Certainly. A photo address, madam. Yes. Yes. We'll have a cab there in less than five minutes. Good day. Queen Frank, the three four. Where are you, Frank? Over. Top of Iron Lane. Ah. Go to the corner of Allsop Avenue and Denby Road, fair at the station. Over. I'm on my way. All right. Hello, page 24. I'm in a bit of trouble. Oh? Uh, excuse me. Uh, just a moment, I'm busy. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the matter, Tommy? Gearbox packed up. Well, where are you now? Ponds End Station. Well, you hang on there and I'll send a wagon along for you. Yeah. I wonder if you... Uh, no, just a moment, I'm busy. Uh, see you later. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I want to pay. 
Hello, it's only one to base. Are you receiving me? <laughs> I'm afraid there's only me here. Hello, base. Hello, base. I can't hear you. Is the switch down? Switch, switch. Hello. 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 At last. Oh. Look, I'm in a hurry. How do I get to Bluebell Road? Yeah, where are you now? Woodbridge Town Hall. 29 bucks. <laughs> You're in a hurry, well, if I were you, if you can afford it, take a taxi. This is some funny man. This is a taxi. Is it? Well, it's simple then. Ask the driver. He's your little. Don't crank him. How do I get to Bluebell Road? Well, well, I'll do my best. Bluebell Road, you said. Are you ready? Yep. Go on. Uh, turn left at the end of the road. Right. Left. Yes, go on. Round by the post office. Round by the post office. Okay. Left again when you reach the cinema. Yes. And left again at the lights. <laughs> Where are you now? I'm in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here now? What do you want? Well, I want to know how to stop one of your taxi cabs from bouncing off the top of the gasometer <laughs> right into the middle of Laramie. It can be done, you know. Yes. Get some of our drivers behind the wheel. And if the road runs the same way as they do, <laughs> it's a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very amusing anecdote. Now, I'm looking for your taxi man who keeps coming through my television. Uh. Sounds like Fred Argreaves into anything for a shortcut. <laughs> you don't seem to understand. I'm looking for one of your drivers. Oh, oh well, if you wish to speak to one of our drivers, why don't you go along the corridor to the duty room? You'll probably find the chap you're looking for now. Ah, thank you very much indeed. I'm sure he'll understand. He sounds like a very reasonable man on television. All the way to a Acacia Avenue and back, then all the way to the GPO and back, and for nothing. When I catch up with that alley worth, I'm going to fetch him such a... Forget it. It's not worth worrying about. Well, he has no right to waste my time like that. Oh. Well, I'm going to get myself another cup of tea. Then we can have that game of pontoon, eh? Right, old Joe. I'll deal the cards then. Right, Hello, Joe. Oi, Sue. Hello, Tommy. You're looking a bit browned off. You could say that again. Here, look at that. Thruppence. Thruppence. All the white and curls and dry at the Woodbridge Station, and it gives me thruppence. It's all in the game, Tommy. Yeah. Well, if I had have overcharged him too, Bob, you know I'd have been out of pocket. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a go. I'm just waiting for Joe coming back. Well, fair enough. Deal me in. All right. Ah, good afternoon, gentlemen. Do you want a taxi? No, just the driver. Just the driver? Yes, it could be one of you two. Would you mind saying you want a taxi again, please? Do you want a taxi? It's possible. Would you say just the driver? Just the driver? Well, I'm not quite sure. Probably be better if you just changed over. Would you say just the driver? Just the driver? Now it's your turn. Do you want a taxi? Now look here, mate. No, it's not you either. I can't understand it. Well, I just have to wait here till somebody else comes in. Well, who are you looking for then? Well, I'm not sure of his name, but he's very friendly with a gentleman called Roger. <laughs> well, I don't know anyone called Roger. <laughs> you, Tommy? No, I don't. Uh, well, if he wants to wait, let him wait. Ah, thank you very much indeed. I think I will. What are you doing? Yeah, I'll find my... What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sticking, yes. <laughs> no, I said I'm sticking. <laughs> I am sticking. Look here, mate, what are you playing at? That's exactly what I'd like to ask you. I've never played pontoon like this before. What's all this then? Simmy started it. No? Nonsense. Just because I've got two queens, there's no need to get so bad tempered. He's obviously a very bad loser. I wouldn't play cards with him. What is it that you want? Well, uh, would you say that again? I said, what is it that you want? Ah, try saying cab 44. Well, I am cab 44. <laughs> been looking for this man all day. Oh, you're too late. I'm off duty for an hour. Only for an hour? Oh, that's no good. There's only the Welsh news on now. <laughs> what are you talking about? My, your boys on my television set. It's very confusing now. Take Panorama the other night. When Selwyn Lloyd was asked, about the state of the gold reserves, you said there's six and ninepence on the clock and the meter's still running. <laughs> it could have caused the national crisis. Oh, look, 
I've added just about enough for today. All this rubbish that you're talking, and that fall down at the GPO. Fool at the GPO. Ah, you mean Mr. West. Tell me, did he show you the gasometer he's got on his desk? Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Yes. Were you down at the GPO about an hour ago? Yes, I was. Yes, that's true. Your name wouldn't be worth by any chance. Did, it's nice oh, I've you. been waiting for this. No, no, no. Please, no, no. calm down, Joe. Calm down. Now, Joe, Joe, please calm down. Be reasonable. <laughs> All I'm asking you to do is stop using your radio. Now, listen to me. If you were the last man on earth and asked me to stop using my radio, I wouldn't do it. Any time I get in my cab, I'll use it, and there's nothing you can do about it. Now, get out! Very well, if that's your attitude... Excuse me. Very well, if that's your attitude, from now on, I shall use the corporation buffers. You can sit here and play cards all day for all I care, and I hope you never get another pair. Good day! <laughs> I wonder if any of you gentlemen are passing in a Casey Avenue would care to give me a lift. <laughs> How about you, Joe? Yeah, Joe! <laughs> there, there you are. Half an hour of trouble-free viewing. There wasn't a peep from cab 44. Well, I must admit, Mr. Worth, you've solved the problem very cleverly. Well, it's quite simple, really. It's just a question of going about it the right way, isn't it? There's always a way out. Yes, from now on, I can watch television without any interference whatsoever. Here. Yeah. Yes? There must be about 15 bob on the clock by now. How much longer do you want me to wait? Just a moment. You want to stay for the news? Yes. Have you got five shillings? <laughs> 